Welcome back to season 31 of 7-Eleven Junior Hockey Magazine. I'm your host, Gino Retta. Time now for the CJHL Report. The Canadian Junior Hockey League brings together 115 teams in the nine Junior A leagues involving over 2,500 players from right across the country. Now join us is Central Canadian Hockey League Commissioner Kevin Abrams. Kevin, welcome to the show. Great to have you back with us, my friend. It's really wonderful to be here, Gino. Thank you. One of the great things about being uh, in a visual format that we are on the podcast, for those who are watching the podcast right now, is I always look forward to seeing what's in the background. And for those who are watching the podcast right now, they'll see like a whole wall of guitars and music behind you. Give me the background story behind that, Kev. Well, you know what? My family's uh, a few generations of, uh, of musicians, so I, uh, I, I like to, to play. Um, I don't play a lot, but I like to play. And I've got... Uh, cousins who play professionally so uh they're uh, they're certainly uh, a very talented group but it's it's just something that's been in my family for a long time but between music and hockey that's kind of the uh the the the, the family history in a, in a nutshell that's fun and you've been involved in the game for many many years As a matter of fact you've been commissioner since 2006 that makes you the longest serving commissioner across the entire cjhl uh, you've seen a lot go go ahead no, and you know what, you know, I, I, I was thinking that before I went on that, you know, when I first came on board, guys like uh, John Grisdale from BC and uh, Kim Davis from Manitoba were the, you know, the elder statesmen, the, the senior guys, and they both retired uh, in the last three or five years. And, and so uh, realizing that I've been uh, with 16 years uh, at this position, uh, that I'm sort of the longest serving person is... Uh, it's kind of surreal a little bit because I still don't feel like I, there's so many new things that happen every day. And certainly our last couple of years was filled with all sorts of new challenges. So it doesn't feel like it's been 16 years old. And, uh, but I've, I've enjoyed uh, every bit of it. That's for sure. You've gone through some amazing challenges, not the least of which occurred over the last 19 months. It's been nuts. You, you had to cancel a lot of events because of it, but you were able to have a showcase event back in October. How did that go? Tell us about that. Really well, uh, you know, I, I think what happened is, you know, we, our area has been relatively uh, uh, positive in terms of just the trending and the numbers that have been good with respect to uh, COVID and things of that nature. So, you know, we, we've been we've been OK um, probably since the summer and we were ready to roll when uh, when we finally got the uh, the approval from the, the health units in our region. And, uh, you know, the good thing was we, we delayed the start of our season a little bit. We planned on that anyway. And we pushed our showcase to the, um, the Thanksgiving weekend. And, you know, as a result of that, it gave us a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of time to prepare. And uh, it really went off without a hitch. Our numbers in terms of um, people from various levels above us, the, you know, the NHL and NCAA and CHL uh, were pretty consistent with our last showcase two years before. So we're, we were really pleased about that. And, you know, there's, there's just logistical challenges that are new. But I think everybody's, you know, really working hard uh, on the ground level to make things work, you know, as best they can and and understands that it's, um, you know, it's the way we have to operate and, and until yeah. uh, such time as it changes. But uh, no, for the most part, it went really well. In conversation with Central Canadian Hockey League Commissioner Kevin Abrams, uh, you mentioned some numbers. Let me some, run some numbers by you now. Since 2017, over 150 players from the CCHL have moved on to the NCAA ranks for scholarships. Over 50 alumni have gone on to U Sports as well, as many have moved on to either the OHL or QMJHL. What does that say about your league that it has become a ground where, where kids are trained up to go on, if they so choose, to continue their hockey at higher levels? You know what, I'm pleased to hear that. It, it's certainly a challenge to continue uh, uh, developing players for the next level. There's a lot more leagues and teams um, doing a really good job, you know, in Canada and the U.S. now. Um, in, in terms of player development, you know, our, our league started, we're the longest running league in the country at this level. And, you know, we, we started in 1961 um, as a development league for the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, the focus has always been on player development. It's kind of taken different incarnations over the last number of years, you know, from the 60s, of course, and then to the 80s, it changed. And then in the early 2000s, and now here we are in 2020, in, in this decade, where things have changed again. But, but really, uh, the focus has always been you know, how do we find players that want to play at a high level, but also have aspirations to play uh, professionally, collegiately, major, junior, um, you know, whatever the path the player is interested in. We'd like to think that we can provide really good, re really good opportunities for them in terms of exposure and also just the program delivery. We try to be really consistent with that and 
make it really viable for, for players and families to come here and really appreciate what we do for them. One of the kids who graduated out of your program was Devon Levi. Of course, he was the top goalie of the World Junior Bubble last year, originally drafted by Florida, then traded to the Buffalo Sabres, uh, a star at Northeastern University with a team record with shutouts in a single season. What's it like to see kids come through your system and then do that on the national and international stage as well? And what does that mean to other kids that could come behind him? Well, I guess the message is you can get there from here. I think sometimes, you know, families yeah. think like to go someplace else or this is where I need to go. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I think it all comes down to, you know, providing a good place and a good platform for the player to display their skills and, and really an environment that's conducive to player development. And I think, you know, in his case, he's certainly an outstanding player. <clears throat> Excuse me, but, you know, he, he, um, he did all the things right. Uh, he was very patient with his development. He was a star in our league for sure, uh, a national star at the junior A level. Uh, and, you know, I think everyone would say that, you know, as a later pick in the NHL draft, people can't understand how he could have gone so late. But I think our level sometimes, you know, doesn't get the, the, the volume of attention that higher levels get. Yeah. But certainly there's, there's players here that will go on to play professionally in our league. And, and uh, the great thing is the players, you know, you can tell them, we don't know who that is. That could be you. I mean. Right. Uh, just keep working hard and, and uh, think good things happen. And, you know, we have a lot of success stories about pro hockey, um, but we have an equal number of, of success stories about players who have gone, used our, our, our league as a stepping stone to get an education and gone to great careers and other professions. So not everybody's going to play in the NHL, um, but, you know, we think that if we, if we create enough of, of an, an atmosphere and environment that, makes some focus on really how to do well and, and, and excel and provide excellence in different fields that, you know, they're going to do well no matter what they choose to do in life. Creating opportunity and giving them access through being equipped properly, I guess, is key part of it. I mentioned you've been the CCHL commissioner since 06. During your tenure, the league's grown from 10 to 12 franchises, which is very healthy for the league for that happening. But you've also brought in new ventures, real-time stats, video coaching, a lot of different showcases so these kids could be seen. How important has, has developing all that new technology and having access to that been to you and the expansion and strength of your league and the exposure of the players? Well, you know, I think every league has to have an identity and a niche and sort of uh, a view from, from afar as to what we're all about. And clearly, you know, what we've established is that we're, we're, we'd like to be first at lots of things if we can be. And, and technology has been an area where we, you know, we think we've been first at a lot of the times, um, you know, providing video analysis, uh, uh, you know, varying statistical uh, uh, platforms that we've had, um, you know, and the use of analytics, I think, you know, as a league and a team and for individual players, uh, we're in our fourth year of, of using those, those features with respect to video analytics. And, you know, a lot of other leagues have, have seen what we've done and, and come on board. And that's good for the game and good for the players. But, you know, we're always looking at new opportunities to, to enhance that. And I think we've invested in that as a, as a league and, and the ownership groups in the league have done that. Because, you know, we know we recognize that, you know, we're not the largest league. We're not the highest profile league. But we do things well um, when it comes to sort of our, our, our strong suit. And, and really technology has been at the forefront of that for quite some time. Awesome. Hey, Kev, great catching up with you, my friend. I'm not going to ask you to take a guitar down and play us out, but maybe next time we'll commit a whole segment to that, okay? Uh, yeah, I'd rather not. I prefer uh, just chatting hockey with you guys, but I appreciate the opportunity once again. Thanks, Gino. Thanks, Kevin. That was Central Canadian Hockey League Commissioner Kevin Abrams. And that wraps up this week's CJHL Report. The Canadian Junior Hockey League. Your future is here. Still inside 7-Eleven Junior Hockey Magazine, he represented the red and white twice during his junior career, winning a gold medal both times. And now he's playing for the Nashville Predators. We'll check in with Matt Duchesne in this week's edition of Where Are They Now? You're listening to Canada's only nationally syndicated junior hockey radio show. This is season 31 of 7-Eleven Junior Hockey Magazine. And don't forget, you can listen and subscribe to the complete podcast by checking out any of your favorite podcast platforms.